Do you want to become better at the combat in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink and destroy all of your enemies? Well, here's some essential combat tips and advice that we wanted to share after completing the entire end game. In this video, we will use some footage from the end game, but it will be end game fights that Psy Games have already revealed months before the official release, so this is a light spoiler warning. First up, you should be aware that link time is very important for getting through some of the harder fights in the very end game, where you only have small windows to actually damage the enemies. This means increasing the amount of link times that you can get is going to be massively helpful. There's a trick that you can use to get double the amount of link time activations. To do this, you want to build up your link time to 100% by building the stun gauge and using link attacks. During this period, you want to save and not use your SBA. Once you've got link time to 100%, do your next link attack to activate the link time and get a ton of burst damage off on the boss. Immediately after the link time has ended, activate your SBA and have every other party member join in for a full chain burst. By activating a full chain burst, you will automatically fill the link time to 100% again, letting you loop into an additional link time afterwards. So essentially, the loop is to build up link time manually, use link time, activate your SBA for a full chain burst and then go back into link time after the full chain burst. To get more out of your link time, characters with rapid hitting attacks are great as they will extend the length of time that you get during your link time with each hit that they deal. This means characters with supplementary damage, such as Percival, are fantastic for extending how long you remain in link time, so check for characters that can do similar things to this. On top of this, there are a couple of other ways outside of combat to actually increase the link percentage. Reviving party members and using potions like the blue potion will actually add around 2.5-3% to to the gauge. This can be absolutely clutch when you just need that little extra push to get you to the 100% before the stun triggers. If you are worried about wasting your potions because you don't have that many of them, then do note you can increase the number of potions you get by using the potion hoarder sigil, which will even increase your revive potions. In addition to this, there's another way to increase how much link percentage you get, which obviously leads into getting link time quicker and more often. If you throw on the link together sigil, not only does this increase the amount of link time gains that you get, but also increases your SBA damage and chain burst damage. This means if everyone in your team has this sigil on at maximum level, you will be hitting harder during link attacks, you'll be reaching link time quicker, and your SBA and chain burst will be hitting even harder. Next up, if you are new to action RPGs and just generally the game itself, then learning to dodge and get the perfect timing can be difficult, especially if you haven't built up that muscle memory from other games that have similar mechanics. A quick tip that will have you hitting perfect dodges way easier is to know that you need to dodge into danger rather than away from it. This will help you trigger those perfect dodges more consistently and thus giving you the invincibility from the perfect dodge, meaning you won't take any more damage for a second or two afterwards. Once you get deeper into the end End game, you will start unlocking the improved dodge sigil. This will not only increase the amount of maximum dodges you can do before hitting the cooldown state, but at maximum level this sigil also seems to increase the perfect dodge window making it even easier. Next up, it's worth knowing that one of the biggest combat mistakes that we were making is trying to be a reaction god and just perfectly dodge everything. You can still do this if you want to, but we just wanted to reinforce how powerful guarding is in this game. While we personally prefer to dodge everything, there are situations where guarding is way more effective and easy and will completely nullify the damage you would otherwise take. For example, during this fight against Fury Kane, blocking one of the tornadoes just completely gets rid of it. Now from time to time, you will miss your dodges or forget to guard and this will end up with you getting clapped, but there is a fast way to speed up your revival without relying on teammates or potions. You may have missed this tip as the game only tells you about it very early on, but if you mash multiple buttons, it will actually revive you out of the critical state even faster, saving you time and maybe even helping you clutch the fight afterwards. This next tip can have both a positive impact and a negative one. If you want to create more windows of opportunity to deal damage to bosses, then consider taking NPC crewmates or teammates that have the paralysis or glaciate skills equipped. These are very powerful effects that will freeze an enemy in place, allowing you to deal extra damage to them. But the most powerful thing about it is that it actually cancels the enemy's current animation, so you can use this to bypass some of the more difficult movesets that bosses have. However, if you have a teammate that uses this recklessly, such as when an enemy is broken or in any down state, you will lose all of that valuable damage time because it will basically end that animation. Because of this, you want to make sure your statuses are timed correctly, but 
but when they are, they can be very powerful. And next up is a set of tips and basics about Skybound Arts that we've mentioned in previous videos, but they are essential to becoming better in the game when it comes to the actual combat. Elemental matching an enemy's weakness element is going to massively increase the damage you deal, so matching it to one of your biggest attacks such as your SBA is definitely a good idea. This means if you have a party member with the matching elemental weakness to the boss, they should be the one to activate their SBA first because the following chain burst when everyone else joins in will be of the first character's element to activate their SBA, meaning if they weakness match the enemy, it will deal significantly more damage. On top of this, several bosses, and particularly the ones in the very end game, will actually have damage checks and timers. To help keep this video as spoiler light as possible, we won't be showing footage of fights that include this mechanic, but there are several bosses, and particularly the ones in the end game, that have damage checks and timers, otherwise you will wipe. If you are struggling with them, a good plan of action is to save your SBAs before this phase, and these phases normally occur between 50 or 10% of a boss's health bar. During this damage check, you basically have a timer which if you don't defeat the boss in that time or break them, then you will basically wipe. This is why it's great to save your SBA, because your SBA and full chain burst sequences will completely pause the timer but still allow you to deal damage. This makes completing these damage thresholds significantly easier. Share any extra combat tips that you've learnt down below so we can all learn together as a community, and make sure to subscribe because we're going to have more Grand Blue Fantasy Relink coming your way soon.